Hi, this is Dan Stamnus with TEPCO, and I'm one of the P6 trainers and implementation specialists here at TEPCO. And today I want to talk about the problem with original fields, planned fields, and budgeted fields in P6. These fields tend to cause quite a bit of confusion because people confuse them with the baseline. I have one example here in P6 of an activity, and what I've done is I've broken the columns into groups. So the first columns are the original duration, budgeted labor units, plan start, and plan finish. So that's group number one. The second group is going to be the start, finish, at completion duration, and at completion labor units. And the third group is going to be baseline project start, baseline project finish, baseline project duration, and baseline project labor units. The most important thing to understand how these fields work is to keep them separated into the three groups. So the first group is basically your planned data. So original duration and budgeted labor units planned and start and planned finish. That is your plan data. Those are the fields that you can edit while you're building a plan. The second group, the start, finish, at completion duration, and at completion labor units, those are your at completion hours and durations and dates. Those are the ones that you would be viewing during execution. The third group is all of the baseline data. Those are the ones you should view during execution when you are comparing against the second group. So let's focus on the first group, the original duration which can also be found down in the status tab, is the original duration that you put in when you are building your plan. The budgeted labor units, which is also found down in the status tab, are the labor units associated with that activity. So if you put in an original duration and then you assign some resources, the budgeted labor units or budgeted field will calculate based on how many resources you assign against the duration that you have applied. The plan start and plan finish fields are also located in the status tab, but those are also the equivalent of the start and finish fields. So before you mark an activity as started, the plan start and plan finish will equal the start and finish. Once you mark an activity as started, they separate from each other. The plan start and plan finish become independent, and the start and the finish are the ones that you can update by putting in actual starts or actual finishes. Also, when you mark an activity as started, the original duration separates from the at completion duration, and the budgeted labor units separates from the at completion labor units. So for example, without starting the activity, I'm going to change my original duration to 50. Watch how the at completion duration also changed to 50 along with the remaining duration. I'm also going to change my budgeted labor units to 100, and you'll notice that the remaining and at complete both change to 100 as well. Now watch what happens when I mark the activity as started. I mark it as started, I'm going to go back and change my original duration back to 40. The remaining and at complete fields did not change. I'm also going to change my budgeted field back to 80. And the remaining and at complete labor units did not change either. This is because P6 has disconnected those fields from the at complete fields. At the same time, it also disconnected the plan start and the plan finish from the start and finish fields. Another way to look at it is that when we mark the activity as started, P6 disconnected those fields creating a baseline against that one activity. The problem is, is it only disconnects those fields on that started activity, so any other activities that might be coming next, if you created a sequence of activities, they have not created their own baseline in the background on each of them, so they're basically free-floating and the planned and budgeted and original still equals the start and the finish and the at completion duration and at completion labor units on future activities. So it's not until you mark an activity as started does P6 actually disconnect the original duration from the at complete duration and it also disconnects the budgeted labor units from the at complete labor units. What's confusing is that many times there is a misconception that the original duration, budgeted labor units, plan start, and plan finish are a target or are a baseline. The reality is they are not a true static baseline. We have to create baselines once we get our project plan all planned out and in order and approved. 
So we create a baseline afterwards, and we really don't look at that first set of fields once we've created a baseline. What we want to look at after we've created a baseline are the third set of fields over here. To add a little bit more clarity around the dates, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change my start or my actual start to the 5th of April. And you'll notice that the plan start did not change. If the activity was not started, then I could change this. It's going to ask if I want a constraint on it. I'll just say no, but it will move anyway temporarily until I schedule it again. But you'll notice that the plan start followed the start that I had put in. So if I change the plan start back to the fourth, the scheduled start and finish will adjust accordingly as well. Notice how when I deprogress the task too by taking the started checkbox off that my remaining and at complete went back to 40 and my remaining and at complete on the labor units also went back to 40. This has to do with some schedule settings that are on by default which links the two together. You can actually turn these schedule settings off but we do not recommend doing that. Now regarding the third set of fields which come from the baseline, currently I do not have a baseline created. So if I go up to project, assign baselines, you'll see that it says current project here. Basically P6 is looking at the current project but by default is actually looking at the first set of fields. But the first fields for plan fields actually equal the baseline fields at this point in time. Now if I change the original duration again, to 50, you'll see that the at completion duration changed and the baseline project duration changed. So the baseline right now is looking at the current project, which means it is not a static baseline. When we create baselines, those are activities and durations and labor units that stay as they are. They are static, so they do not move when we make changes to one of our current plans. But right now, they are moving because basically P6 is looking at the first set of fields to populate the last set of fields for the baseline. Now, if I start an activity as started again, if I change the current start once again to the fifth, notice how the baseline still reflects the fourth. The baseline is technically static right now in one sense, except if I come over here to the plan start and I change this to the sixth, Notice how the baseline changed to the 6 as well. So the baseline at this point in time is feeding from the original duration, budgeted labor units, plan start, and plan finish. Okay, I've deprogressed the activity again to set everything back to the way it originally was. Now I'm going to show you something that adds another layer of confusion to these concepts. I'm going to go up to Admin, Admin Preferences, and I'm going to go to the Earned Value tab here under Admin Preferences. And when you go to this tab, you need to have a clear understanding of this bottom option here for Earned Value Calculation. When we create a baseline in P6, we can tell P6 which fields in the baseline to use to calculate variance against. That is controlled by this drop-down list here. And you'll see that there are three options, Add Completion Values with Current Dates, Budgeted Values with Current Dates, and budgeted values with plan dates. So by default, it is set with budgeted values with plan dates. Let's talk about that one first. So by using budgeted values with plan dates, it's going to use the fields from group one, original duration, budgeted labor units, plan start, and plan finish. So remember, when we mark the activity as started, and then we change anything about the current activity settings, for example, the dates, the current start, current finish, or we make a change to the at completion duration or the at completion labor units, that's going to impose a variance on that one activity. If we use budgeted values with plan dates for our baseline to look at, it's going to look at those fields, and if you have variance on them and you create a baseline, the baseline is going to reflect the variance. Now let's change this again to budgeted values with current dates. This means that P6 is going to look at whatever the current budgeted values are, so budgeted labor units, but it's going to look at the current dates. So it's going to be a mix of group 1 and group 2. It's going to take the group 1 budgeted labor units, but it's going to take the group 2 current start and finish dates. 
And the last option is at completion values with current dates. This one is going to look at any of the settings in group two. So it's going to look at the current start, the current finish, the at completion duration, and the at completion labor units. This is the one you typically want to use anytime you want to create a baseline with zero variance. If you're expecting to create a new baseline and everything is now flattened out and you have no variance showing against that baseline, this is the option that you want to use. By the way, this option has to be set before you create the baseline. You cannot create a baseline with it set to at completion values with current dates and then come in here and switch it to say budgeted values with plan dates and expect the baseline variance to change. It does not change after the fact, so you have to make sure that this earn value calculation setting is in place before you create the baseline. Also keep in mind that if you do want to show variance, let's say that you're creating a new baseline two or three weeks into the execution of a project, but you want to retain the variance that you had up to that two or three week point. The variance that is associated with budgeted values with plan dates is the variance against the group one up here. So that variance was derived from when we marked the activity as started. It's not the actual true baseline variance. In turnarounds, we usually have a pre-turnaround phase and an execution phase. In pre-turnaround phase, we recommend that you create a new baseline for pre-turnaround. This could be four to six weeks before the turnaround execution. You want to create that baseline at the beginning of your pre-turnaround and you want to use it to track your pre-turnaround variance. But when you go into turnaround execution, you want to possibly create a new baseline and you want there to be zero variance on the new baseline. Otherwise, anything that you had variance on in pre-turnaround will be reflected while you're going through the rest of your turnaround execution, and that may not be appropriate. A lot of times in pre-turnaround, we don't get all of the work done, so we actually have to move those activities into the turnaround execution window. So in that case, we typically will have a second baseline created during turnaround execution, but we don't necessarily want the variance showing on it. If you do need to reflect the variance or go back in time and review what kind of variance you had in pre-turnaround, you would want to go and turn on the previous pre-turnaround or reassign the pre-turnaround baseline to your project file. I'm going to give you an example now of the two different types of baselines, whether or not we're using plan dates versus the at completion dates. I'm going to do this by starting this activity again and I'm going to finish it, but I'm going to change the dates on the start and finish. And I'm also going to change my at completion labor units, which is actually driven by my actual labor units at this point. So in the first columns here, I still have an original duration of 40. My at completion duration is also 40, so I didn't change any of that. The budget of labor units, though, were set to 80, and I've now altered that to be 75. And you'll see that we do have a variance between our start and plan start and our plan finish and our finish. So when we create a baseline, the question we have to ask is, do we want to reflect that variance or do we not want to reflect that variance? If we want to reflect the variance, and keep in mind that is variance from, that occurred from us marking the activity as started, I'm going to go to Admin, Admin Preferences to the Earn Value tab, and ensure that it says Budgeted Values with Plan Dates. Now I'll close the Admin Preferences, and I'm going to go to Project, maintain baselines and I'm going to add a baseline. I'm going to save a copy of the current project as a new baseline and I'm going to close this and I also have to remember to go turn the baseline on or assign it to the project. So I'm going to go to a, uh, project assign baselines and we'll use the project baseline here. There's the new one that I just created. We'll go ahead and assign that. Now if I show you the Gantt chart, I've created a baseline bar here and you can see the variance there. So this is the planned start and planned finish versus the, the actual start and actual finish. By having the baseline settings under the admin preferences set to budgeted values with plan dates, that's what's reflected. We see the variance now. I'm going to change this to at completion values with current dates. You'll notice that when I change it, it doesn't do anything to the view here. That's because, like I said earlier, you have to have that setting in the admin preferences in place before you create the baseline. So now I'm going to go to Project, Maintain Baselines. I'm going to add another baseline, and I'll be saving a copy of the current, and I click OK. 
Now watch what happens when I go up to Project, Assign Baselines, and I change it to the second baseline that I made using at completion values with current dates. Click OK. Now there's no variance. So to summarize this video, keep in mind that you should look at these fields as three different groups. Original, budgeted, and planned fields all belong in group one. The current start, current finish, at completion, duration, and at completion labor units are in group two. And then BL project start or baseline project start, baseline project finish, baseline project duration, and baseline project labor units are part of group three. And when you create a baseline, just remember to go to admin, admin preferences, and you need to make sure that your company understands which option they want to use when you're creating a baseline because these three options cause P6 to look at the different fields up here, whether it's planned and budgeted, or it might be budgeted with the current dates, or it might be all of the current dates plus the at completion labor units. Thanks for joining me for this video. If you need any support with implementations, training, consulting support, or you need scheduling or cost control support, please contact us at TEPCO by going to www.tepco.us.